I don't think it is too much to say that the message I'm about to preach and the series I'm about to begin may be, when it comes to your personal life, may be one of the most important that you've ever heard, that you've ever had an opportunity to, to dive into. Starting a series entitled Kingdom People. Say it with me, Kingdom People. Kingdom, Kingdom People. It is a critical time that we live in. There is no, it is an important time that we live in. There's no doubt that uh, most all of you are paying attention at all, realize that, it's, uh, 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 realize that that is the case. And, and there is, um, uh, and rightly so, there's much, much concern over the times that we live in and the, and the future of our country and of our world and, and indeed of the church and many things. But I want you to know this morning, God has a plan. Amen. God has a plan, and kingdom people are part of God's plan. Hear me, kingdom people are part of God's plan. And so this morning, I'm going to begin this series with a message entitled, The King and Kingdoms. The King and Kingdoms. Because here's what I believe, followers of Christ are people of the kingdom of God. In fact, Jesus emphasized that. 54 times Jesus spoke on the kingdom of God. 32 times the New Testament talks, talks about the kingdom of God. And us as people, kingdom people. So let's talk, let's talk about that this morning. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Most of you don't need to turn there. You'll know this first scripture by heart. It's part of the Lord's Prayer that says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The second scripture of Revelation 11:15. 11, 11:15. 15. 11, 15. Most of it's on the screen. I want to read what, uh, the sentence before what's on the screen. The seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of the Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Can somebody say amen? amen. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you this morning for the privilege of standing in your desk behind your pulpit. I pray that you would help us this morning, help uh, those of us that are here, those that are online, and those that will hear this, Lord, to hear and pay attention closely for the next few minutes. Holy Spirit, quicken our spirits to receive and accept and live in the fullness of what you want to show us from your word this morning. In Christ's name we pray, amen. A rancher was on his farm just doing his normal thing, tending to chores and so forth, and a a DEA agent, uh, Drug Enforcement Administration agent, came up and said to him, I'm here, I've heard a rumor that there are illegal drugs being grown on this property, I'm here to inspect. And the farmer said, sure, that's no problem. He said, but don't go in that field over there, the one with the big fence. And the DEA agent, uh, he got an attitude and he whipped out his badge and he said, you see this badge? It's DEA agent. I'm backed by the federal government. I can go anywhere I want to go. I can inspect anything I want to inspect. I'm backed by the authority of this badge. And the farmer said, fine, do what you got to do. A few minutes go by, and the farmer's tending to his chores, and he hears just this screaming and yelling, and he looks over, and the DAA agent is running as fast as he can, and he's being chased by Rusty. Rusty is a Santana Gertrudis bull that is chasing him at full speed and is gaining on him with every step. And the farmer throws his tools down and runs over to the fence and says, Your badge! Show him your badge! <laughs> Clearly, the DEA agent needed a better understanding of whose kingdom he was in, didn't he? And so it is with you and I this morning. We need a better understanding of whose kingdom we are in. Amen? So let's talk about this for a few moments. The, uh, the statement from Revelation, the first statement from the Lord's Prayer, I'm going to talk about some more in just a moment. But the statement from, the, from Revelation is actually a prophetic statement that talks about a time to come, a time to come when all of the kingdoms of the world will be brought under the kingdom of God. The kingdom of the Lord and the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So we, I wanted to spend a few moments this morning as we launch this, met, this series about kingdom people, talking about kingdom and kingdoms. So to do that, let's, let's start with a question. If you're following along on your outline, 
I hope you'll follow along and walk with this. So what is a kingdom? The word there is defined as royal authority to exercise dominion and sovereignty. Royal authority to exercise dominion and sovereignty. So a kingdom is this, if you're filling out your outline there. A kingdom is a region of rule, an area of authority, a sphere of influence. Now that, that definition will serve you well as we go through this series, but I want you to tune into it this morning. A kingdom is a region of rule, an area of authority, a sphere of influence. So what are the kingdoms of this world that Revelation says will eventually come under God's kingdom, the kingdom of God? Well, there are many. There are multiple. I want to mention four this morning real quickly. First of all is geopolitical kingdoms. There are in the Bible, clearly there are some references to some geopolitical kingdoms. And that is some of what is referred to in the book of Revelation. They're geopolitical kingdoms. I do want to press, uh, emphasize this. When God speaks of geopolitical kingdoms, when we find them in the Bible, it has less to do with territories and land like it does in our world today. It has much more to do with rulers and people. God, God is more interested in people than he is property. Come on, somebody. God is more interested in people than he is property. So there are the geopolitical, and I didn't want to just leave that out. That is uh, one of the kingdoms of this world. But there's some more, more I think, more uh, important kingdoms to us. First of all, there's the kingdom of light and of darkness. The kingdom of light and of darkness. The Bible speaks often of the kingdom of light and often of the kingdom of darkness. In fact, let me read for you a couple of things that are said. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 through 13 says this. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son. Come on, somebody. He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of his son. First Peter, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 says this, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Watch this. That you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. Can I get an amen this morning? Acts chapter 26, verse 17 and 18, when God is speaking to, Saul, uh, to Paul, he says this, I am sending you to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, to, from the power of Satan to the power of Almighty God. Aren't you glad this morning that there is a kingdom of light that has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness? Amen? Then there is, there are two other kingdoms. One is the obvious, and the third, fourth one is the one I want to speak a few minutes on this morning. The fourth, third one is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God actually is present in the world today in two ways. First is infinite. I want you to understand this. And as we go through this series, you've got to understand this. First of all, God's kingdom is infinite. There is a sense in which God's kingdom is supreme and it is sovereign. You hear what I'm saying? It is supreme and it is sovereign. It is omniscient, means it is all-knowing. It is omnipresent, it means it is all-present. It is omnipotent, which means it is all-powerful and is all-encompassing. There is a sense in which God's kingdom is infinite. It is above and beyond everything else. But there is also, and you've got to listen closely to what I'm saying to you this morning, there is a sense in which, there's a sense in which God's kingdom is finite. In other words, it must be established. It must be established. That does not take away from the fact that God's kingdom is infinite, the fact that his kingdom is also finite in that it must be established. In fact, we get this, you can understand this when you read uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, when you read the Lord's Prayer. The fact that you and I must pray every day, thy, your kingdom come, your will be done, tells us what? That there's a sense in which God's kingdom must be established day after day after day, place after place. Every region, every area, every place, must be, it must be established. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So God's kingdom is infinite, is above and beyond, and it must be established. And that point there, the fact that it must be established, your kingdom come, your will will be done, brings us to the third, the fourth point, which is what I want to spend the rest of my time with you talking about this morning. And it is our kingdom, our kingdom. Now, I want you to, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm saying this morning. If you, if you don't pay close attention, you'll miss and may misinterpret what I'm trying to say to you this morning. You do understand, don't you, this morning? 
that God has granted unto every one of us a kingdom. And that kingdom is our life over which he has given us free will. You know what that means? That means God has given us rule, authority, and influence over our own life. And many of you may not have ever seen your life as a kingdom. Your life is your kingdom. God has granted you free will. God has granted you the authority over your life. God has granted you the rule over your life. God has granted you the influence over your life. That is your kingdom. God has given it to you. When he gave you free will, he gave you the authority, you the, you the rule, you the influence over your life. In fact, it is your kingdom, it's God's kingdom, it's your region of rule, it's your area of authority, it's your sphere of influence. I love what Dallas Willard put. Dallas Willard was a professor. Dallas Willard was a professor, and he said, here's what he, of, of New Testament uh, and theology and philosophy, and here's what he said, our kingdom is our sphere of influence. God grants us our kingdom when he gives us life. He goes on to say this, the most immediate kingdom is our bodies, our souls, and our spirits. But as we mature, our kingdom, our sphere of influence grows, whether good or bad, we have influence over our kingdom. Wow. See, your life and everything in your life is, is a part of your kingdom. God has granted you that authority. God has granted you that rule. God has granted you that influence. So, Pastor, why is that important? Why is that important? Here's why that's important. Here's the goal. Here's the goal. So, God's kingdom is infinite, but it is finite in that it must be established, and our kingdom is finite. So, the goal is what? Here's the goal. If you get, don't miss any, you get anything else, get this. The goal of our kingdom is to bring it in submission to his kingdom. Because when we do, we live in his kingdom, and his kingdom expands. Come on, somebody. Are you getting what I'm saying? The goal of my kingdom must be to bring it under submission of his kingdom. And when I do, I live in his kingdom and his kingdom then is expanded. It's true in every part of our life. You see, listen, when you pray your kingdom come, his kingdom has to come here first. Are you, are you tracking with me? You can't pray. You can't pray your kingdom come and mean it for out there unless you mean it first in here. Come on, somebody. I, I'm going to preach for a little bit this morning whether you like it or not. You can't pray your will be done out there, off out there some way, unless you first mean it. Your will be done right here in me, in my life, in my body, in my soul, and in my spirit. Your kingdom come here. Your will be done here. And then as I grow in your kingdom, your kingdom is expanded in me and through my authority, rule, and influence in the world. Have you ever... I don't know if you've ever considered it, but your life is your kingdom, and your goal is to line your kingdom up with his kingdom. That is our whole goal and rule in life. See, Jesus on the kingdom, in fact, Jesus says something on the kingdom. Uh, he says three very specific things. Jesus says a lot about the kingdom, but the very three specific things as it relates to you and I, his kingdom as it relates to you and I. Once when Jesus told the disciples to go out and to preach and to heal, here's what he said. Here's what he said to them. He said, when you do that, say to them, watch now, he told the disciples to go preach and heal. And when you do that, here's what he said to say to them. Say to them, when you preach and heal, say to them, the kingdom of God has come near unto you. Do you see what happened there? They aligned their life with his kingdom, and their influence then did what? Spread, brought the kingdom of God near to those people. He says it in another way a second time, and this time... He's actually casting out demons. And when he cast out demons, there were those around who accused him of casting out demons by the power of Satan. He said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, if, if, watch this, if the finger of God, if the finger of God has cast out the demons, then the kingdom of God, watch this, the kingdom of God has to become upon you. As Jesus aligned his kingdom, his life, with the kingdom, then the kingdom of God came upon them. Then there's a third way. The Pharisees were actually questioning. The Pharisees were actually questioning Jesus about the kingdom. 
They were actually saying, where is it? Where, where exactly? They were thinking geopolitical. Where is the kingdom? And Jesus says this, the kingdom of God is not something you can observe, nor is it something that people can say, here it is or there it is. Watch this. Because the kingdom of God is in you. Do you understand this morning? That when you align your life, your kingdom, with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God comes near, the kingdom of God comes upon, and the kingdom of God comes in. Our goal is to line our kingdom up with his kingdom so that we live in his kingdom and expand the kingdom of God. Amen? Are you getting it this morning? I don't, most of us have never thought of the kingdom of God in this way. And for lack of that, we have failed to take the authority, the rule, and the influence that God has given us over our lives and over our sphere of influence. You're tracking me? Many people have failed to see that their life is a kingdom. And in failing to see that, we fail to take the authority that God has given us, the rule that God has given us, the influence that God has given us, and expand his kingdom on us and his kingdom on earth. But the key to all this, let me, let me, let me give you the key to all this, and then, and then I want to get practical here for just for a moment. The key to this is this. In the future, God's kingdom will one day rule over all kingdoms. And in, so in the present, you must bring your rule, his rule, over yours. In the future, God's kingdom will rule over all kingdoms. So in the present, you must bring his rule over yours. See, this is where I line up. This is where I align my life with his rule. I align my life with his authority. I align my life with his influence over every area of my life. All right, I've said all of that. Now let me get practical here just for, a, just for a minute. Let me get practical. What does that mean? I mean, when it comes to living in the kingdom, because I think, I, think I, uh, I think I have gone, I think everybody's on board where we're talking about our life as a kingdom that God has granted unto us, and our goal is to line it up with this kingdom. So, right, so what, what do we do with that? What do we, what do, we do with that? First thing is this. There's four things that are on your outline there, and I, and I want to expand on them just a little bit for the rest of the time we have. First of all is this. Understand that God has given you a kingdom. Your life and everything in it is the kingdom that God has given you. Your life and everything in it is the kingdom that God has given you. And you need to understand that God has given you a kingdom. Listen to me this morning. Your kingdom, your life is under your rule, your authority, and your influence. Don't give that authority, that rule, or that influence over to anyone else. God has given you your kingdom. He has given you your life. That's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons I take such great care in what I listen to and what I watch and who I'm in league with, because I'm not going to give, God's given me a kingdom. I, unless I'm not giving anyone else, uh, or anyone who doesn't believe like I believe, the authority, the rule, and the influence over my kingdom. Uh, God's given me that kingdom in my life. Guard your eyes, guard your ears, guard your connections with people. God's given you a kingdom. Stand for your kingdom. Amen. And it's never been more important than it is today with social media as prevalent as it is. I watch people all the time giving their authority over to some expert on social media. Do you know there's some 21-year-old kid living in his mama's basement can present himself as an expert. You can buy into that garbage, and what have you done? You've given some... 21-year-old, do-nothing, know-nothing, authority and rule and influence in your kingdom. Come on, somebody. Listen, I, that's, I understand God's given me a kingdom. He's given me the rule, me the authority, me the influence. I'm not surrendering that to anyone else. Amen? Understand God's given you a kingdom. The second thing is this. Align and submit your kingdom to God's kingdom. Align and submit your kingdom to God's kingdom. I've said it once, I'm going to say it again. Everything in your life over which God has given you authority, rule over, or influence over is part of your kingdom and needs to be in line with his kingdom. Now, now I want to get, I want to get, 
I want to get rid well, I'm just going to meddle for a minute. Can I, I just, I'm just going to call, I'm just going to meddle. I'm going to get up in your Kool-Aid for a minute this morning. You, you understand, don't you? That, that applies to every area of life. Every area of life is part of your kingdom. It, primarily, primarily it is your body, your soul, and your spirit. But it, but it also applies in, in every other area of life. Now, let's, th- let's talk about the body here for a moment. When it comes to exercise and eating and rest and physical activity and sexual activity, you understand, don't you, that's your kingdom. That's your kingdom. Can I? I hadn't necessarily planned to do this, but there are a number of young people in the room. Um, and so, you, you gray heads, just, just stick with me here just for a moment. I'm just going to say this. There, there, is, there is, well, I mean, some no hair, some gray hair, okay, all right. So, so I'm just going to go here, okay? You just stick with me for a moment. So I, I, because, listen, it is, it is such, there is such pressure today, such sexual pressure today. Never like it's ever been before. And I have young people ask me, why does God care who I sleep with? It's a good question. I wish more young people would ask it. Let me tell you why, let me tell you why God cares who you sleep with. Listen to me, pay attention right here, right here. Let me tell you why God cares who you sleep with. Because, watch this, when you sleep with somebody, you're giving them rule, authority, and influence in your kingdom. Young lady, uh, young man, you do understand, don't you? Listen to me, young man. Can, can I just go here? Thank you, I'm going to. Um, <laughs> young man, listen to me. You know why God cares who you sleep with? Because you are planting your seed in somebody's kingdom. You need to evaluate if that's where you want to plant your seed in that kingdom or not. Come on, somebody. Is that too bold? Young lady, let me, let me tell you why God cares who you sleep with. Because when you sleep with somebody, you are conceiving their seed in your kingdom. You better evaluate and determine if that's somebody's seed that you want in your kingdom. Amen? It matters. It matters. The same thing with our soul, our, our, our mind, will, emotions, and conscience, our thoughts, desires, feelings, and sense of right and wrong. You, I t- talked about it a little bit a while ago. Listen to me. Your thought life is your kingdom. Your desires are your kingdom. Your feelings are your kingdom. Your sense of right and wrong are your kingdom. Protect that kingdom. Align it and submit it to God. I'm, I'm going to align my Mind, will, emotions, and conscience up with his kingdom. Why? Because I want to be a person that thinks what God thinks, desires what God desires, feels what God feels, and has a sense of the right and wrong that God feels. I'm not getting that from somebody else. I I want to get it from him. Amen? Um, Our spirit, our spiritual life. Align your spiritual life up with the kingdom of God. I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a few moments. But let me get, let, okay, let me get really real now. Let me, get, let me really meddle here for a minute, okay? It's true in every area of our life. Your marriage, your marriage is part of your kingdom. Now, husbands, do not go home and look at your wife and say, this marriage is my kingdom. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> but what I am saying to you, what I am saying to you is your marriage is your kingdom. You need to maintain the, listen, you need to maintain authority of your marriage. You need to maintain rule over your marriage. You need to maintain influence over your marriage and stop giving it to people who don't care anything about your marriage. I had to tell somebody many years ago, I had to tell them, look, if you are not a friend of my marriage, you are not a friend of mine. Come on, somebody. If you're not a friend of my marriage, you can't be a friend of mine. Why? Because, listen, the rule, authority, and influence of my marriage, uh, listen, is, is that's God's given that to me. My finances. My finances are part of God's kingdom to me. It's part of the kingdom that God has given me, and I want to line my finances up with the kingdom of God. That's the reason that I, that I, I tithe and I give generously with offerings. Why? Because I want to line it up. I want to submit it to the kingdom. Your talent, your time, your occupation, your occupation is part of God's kingdom to you. Your education, your social circle, your words. Your words are part of God's kingdom. Hmm. 
I'm going to preach more on all this. I will unpack this more as we go through this series. What I want you to see this morning is this. This is eminently practical. This is where we live. Every, I, want you to, I hope after this morning you will view your life through a new model, a new paradigm, and understand that your life is God's is, is the kingdom that God has given you, and he, is, he desires for you to align it under his kingdom. I see person after person after person. They end, up, watch, they end up somewhere they did not want to be with somebody they did not want to be with because they gave somebody they didn't know authority and rule and influence in their life. That can be physical. It can be sexual. It can be financial. It can be their education. It can be their occupation. Listen, your kingdom is a gift from God. Give it back to him. Amen? Give it back to him. The third thing is this. Grow in God's kingdom. How do you do that, Pastor? Two things I'm going to say to you. Three things I'm going to say to you. Grow in the word. Grow in the spirit. And grow in relationships with those who are growing in the word and the spirit. Grow in the word, grow in the spirit, and grow in relationships with those who are growing in the word and are growing in the spirit. That's how you grow in the kingdom of God. As you do, you will begin to grow in God's rule. You'll begin to grow in God's authority. You'll begin to grow in God's influence in your life. And as your life grows, the kingdom of God grows. And as you expand your influence, expand your rule, expand your authority with your life, with your life, that is the kingdom of God that has been given to the kingdom of God, then the kingdom of God begins to influence. That's how, listen, that's how the gospel is carried forward. That's how the name of Jesus is glorified. That's how people come to know him is by you and I lining our kingdom up with his kingdom and then his kingdom expands. His kingdom expands. And then the fourth thing is this. The fourth thing is this. Exercise God's authority within your kingdom. Exercise God's authority within your kingdom. What I mean by that, it's not, it's not enough to just understand it, align it, and submit to it and grow in it. There, there comes times you have to exercise God's authority in your kingdom. You've got you to exercise God's authority in your body. This body is part of God's kingdom gift to me. I've given it to the kingdom of God, and Satan has no place in my body. Sickness has no place in my body. Disease has no place in my body. Depression has no place in my body. Oppression has no place in my body. I am part of the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of darkness has no place there. You've got to exercise that. You've got to exercise it in your mind, your soul. That is your mind, will, emotions, and conscience. You've got to exercise that in your soul. Listen, your thought life, listen, if your thought life is running places you don't want it to go, exercise some authority. Bring every thought captive to Jesus Christ uh, and submit to the kingdom of God. This, this, this is my mind, my will, my emotions, my thoughts, my conscience. I bring it under the authority of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to stand and live in the kingdom. In your family, parents, especially parents, listen to me. Parents, Listen, you, we are way past the time of being friends with our children. We are way past the time of being timid with our children. We are, we are way past the time, way past the time of letting them decide for themselves. You know, the problem with letting them decide for themselves is they won't decide for themselves. The world is trying harder than most of us to influence our children. As a mom, as a dad, stand in the authority that you have in Christ with your children. Exercise that authority, that rule, and that influence. Amen? Amen? You gotta, you gotta exercise that authority. That has authority in your marriage, your family, your finances. Saying you don't have any place in my finances. You're not gonna rob me. The canker, the the, the worm is not gonna eat, is not gonna destroy. Not my finances. My finances are part of the kingdom of God, and you have no place here. Exercise God's authority within your kingdom. I'm gonna talk about more of that as we go through this series. But listen, but here it is. Understand God has given you a kingdom. Align and submit your kingdom to God's kingdom. Grow in God's kingdom and exercise God's authority within your kingdom. Here it is, the main idea. I'm going to finish with this. Put your life under the rule, authority, and influence of Jesus, the king. 
and you will begin to live in his kingdom. Amen? Let me say it again. Put your life under the rule, the authority, and the influence of Jesus the King, and you will begin to live in the kingdom. Begin to live in the kingdom. I'm going to close with this. It sounds a little silly, but it so powerfully illustrates a point. Most of you know I'm a, I'm a fan of Andy Griffith. I like the old sitcom shows. In fact, uh, we, own, own, we own on DVD the whole set. When you watch what you want to watch, I'm tending to the kingdom. <laughs> there's a show in there where Barney, the deputy, remember, some of you may remember this, he goes out and there's two farmers selling on the side of the street and he runs them off. Or he tries to run them off. They stomp their foot at him and he runs and hides like a coward. And then the whole show is about Barney trying to face up to that. To face up to that. And finally, Andy, finally Andy gets wind of what's going on. Realizes what's going on. He realizes what's going on with Barney. And he says to him, he said, Barney, if you don't get this, you just will get out of law enforcement. But if you get this, it'll be different for you from now on. That badge you wear, you are backed by the full force of law enforcement, the state law enforcement, the federal law. That badge you wear, you are backed by all law enforcement. And he sends Barney out to face the two farmers again. You remember what, remember what Barney says? He says this. Two guys, he comes there, he says, look, you, gotta go. you can't sell here. And they come up, they stomp their feet again. Barney stands there. Both of them tower over him. You understand that's what Satan wants to do to you. He wants to tower over you. He walks right up to him and looks down on him. And Barney says this. He says, look, you too might be a lot bigger than me. But what's behind this badge is a whole lot bigger than you. I'm telling you now, you need to pack up and go. And I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this morning that you have the badge of the kingdom of God in your life. And life may sometimes seem a whole lot bigger than you. But what's behind that badge is a whole lot bigger than anything that you face. Tell it to pack up and go. You are living in the authority of the kingdom kingdom of the kingdom now I know that's a daily walk we got to walk it day by day because our enemy is relentless but our God is powerful all powerful all knowing all present so I encourage you this morning recognize the kingdom God's given you place it under his rule and you'll begin to live in and to expand the kingdom of God not only in your life but in those that are around you so I'm going to give you one challenge this morning. One challenge. Here's the challenge. This week, pray. It's a simple challenge for everything that I've said. Here's the simple. Pray your kingdom come. Your will be done personally. Pray it personally. Pray it. Maybe unlike you've ever prayed it before. Pray it personally. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in my life. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in my finances. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in my body. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in my marriage, my family, my occupation, my workplace, my social circles, your circles. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Amen? Amen. That's my challenge. That's my challenge to you this morning. Stand up with me. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about kingdom people. Their character, their influence, their treasures, their access, their judgment, their house. And all of this is going to reinforce and, and go deeper into what we've talked about this morning. I hope you'll be here and be a part of it. But this week, I want you to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done personally. And begin to submit your kingdom to the king and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. I want you to bow your heads this morning. I wonder if there's one that's in our midst, or maybe there's one that's on, watching online right now, or maybe they will be watching, and, and you're here this morning, and you, you, you know that you are not living under the rule, authority, and influence of Jesus Christ. You're doing your own thing. It's just my, this is my life. I'll do with it what I want to. But this morning, you've recognized the need 
to put your life under the life of Jesus Christ the King. If you're here in my midst or you're online, I want you to acknowledge that this morning. Just acknowledge that. Acknowledge it by raising your hand. If that's who you are and you want to make that decision, make that commitment this morning, if you're in this place, you do, know, you do understand one day all the kingdoms, including your life and your kingdom, will bow before Jesus. Don't wait till it's forced. I'm giving you a chance to choose to do it now, and he'll transform your life. There's one in my, in here in the building or your own line. I want you to acknowledge that. If you're online, just raise your hand. I don't see it, but God sees it. And I'm going to pray with those that are online here. But is there anyone in the house, anyone in the building? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that with you with this one statement. Don't put that decision off. I know there are some in this building right now that you need to put your life under the rule of Jesus Christ the King. I just feel strongly to tell you this morning, don't put that decision off. Don't delay that decision too long. God's calling you. If you need help with that decision, come see me. Give me a call. Give me a text. I'd love to walk with you through that decision. Now let's pray for those that online may have raised their hands or may be watching this in the weeks to come. Lord Jesus, I thank you for those that are online or those that may be watching this in the weeks to come. I pray for them. I pray that right now, God, as they begin to surrender their life to you, ask forgiveness for their sins, ask you to take over their life. I pray, Lord, that you will flood them with forgiveness and love and mercy and fill them with the Holy Spirit in a way, Lord, and they will understand and recognize and they'll even say, why have I put this off so long? This is where I belong. Pray that that will become a reality in their lives this week and that bondages will be broken. Lord, doors will be opened. Jails will be opened. Diseases will be healed. Habits will be overcome. Addictions, Lord, will be destroyed. I thank you for it today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you need help making that decision or walking that journey, email us at connect at therockvaldosta.org or contact me personally. I love you. I pray that you have a blessed, awesome week in the Lord. Till I see you again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in the blessings of the Lord. Next week, I'm talking about kingdom people, their character. You're going to want to be here next week. It's the foundation of everything. God bless you. I love you.